What happened to you when you invited Jesus to come into your life? Other expressions, when I was growing in the Lord, it was getting saved, becoming born again. All those terminologies mean the same thing. But here's what happened to you, or what will happen to you when you receive Jesus into your life, you invite him. It's a wonderful situation. First of all, Jesus is the perfect gentleman. He will not intrude. He will not come into your life unless you ask him to come into your life because we have free will. Nevertheless, using the example of a book, this book is Jesus, Exploits of Faith. In this piece of paper, it says you is you. Now, when you ask Jesus to come into your life, he came in by the Holy Spirit, but then a very supernatural thing happened. This is Jesus, this is you. When you accepted Jesus into your life, you invited him in, you were placed inside of Jesus or inside the book. And that's why we see that Paul talks about being in Christ or inside of Christ. Now notice this. If I drop this book, what happens to you? You get dropped because you are in the book. If I throw this book across to my sofa, what happens to you? You get thrown because you're in the book. If I flung, if I fling this book way out there, what happens to you? You get flung because you're in the book. I'm gonna pick it up. Okay, so just bear with me here. So important. So, you're in Christ. And this is the difference between every so-called religion in which you just improve yourself, but no other so-called religion can do what Jesus Christ does for you. When Jesus was crucified and on the cross, you might not see this physically because it's happened 2,000 years ago, but spiritually, in the eyes of God, that's what matters. Because you're in Christ, you're in the book. When he was crucified, you were crucified with him. And notice that it says in Romans 6, Paul is very careful to say, with Christ. You're in Christ, and then you are with Christ. What happened to Christ happened to you because you are in Christ, and you are with Christ. Notice that Paul uses the word with and in a lot of times. When Jesus died, you died because you are in the book. Now, what is the important about dying? Have you gone, have you gone to a funeral? Have you seen a corpse in a casket? Apart from Jesus, a corpse in a casket is the freest human being there is. Why? A corpse cannot sin. Have you seen a corpse curse from a casket? Have you seen a corpse take drugs? Because he's dead. Have you seen a corpse that is sick? Hello? The moment that a person dies, that sickness dies. Thank you very much. A corpse is free from sin and you are free from sin, that sinful nature that you were born with, you're free from it simply because you are a corpse. Now, why do we still sin? We sin because the habits of sins that God talks about in Romans uh, 8, the habits, the practices of sin are still there, but it says that the Holy Spirit will mortify or gradually kill the habits of sin in you. That's why we still sin. 
But the sinful nature, that sin producing motor that you were born with, killed on the cross with you. That's the beauty. So you're free from sin. We will sin because of the habits that we have, but we're free from the sinful nature because we are a corpse. No other religion does that. Then when Jesus was buried, you were buried in him or with him. What happens to a person that is buried? Out of mind, out of sight. You can't see him, you can't see her anymore. Therefore, your old self, who you were, is gone. Hallelujah. Gone. No connection to who you were, B.C. and A.D. Now, who you have inside of you is Christ Jesus. That's what it means to, be, to get buried. Isn't it beautiful? When Christ came back to life, you came back to life because you're in Him. You're in the book. So right now, what the life that you have in you is the resurrection life of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. No other, religion, no other religion does that kind of stuff. When Christ was raised up from the dead, you were raised up in Him, in the book, and with Him. Hallelujah. And it says that you were raised up far above. Every name that is named, the name of cancer, the name of sickness, the name of demons, you were raised up far above because when Christ was raised up far above, Christ Jesus, you were raised up in Him and with Him. And now, what is your final position? Your final position is that you're seated at the right hand of God in Christ, ruling and reigning. And the Lord has called you into a life of ruling and reigning. What a wonderful life you have. What a wonderful life you have with Jesus. I hope that this has Cause you to understand what it means to receive Jesus into your life, become born again, become saved, whatever you want to call it. Tomorrow I will talk to you about what it means to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Have a great Saturday.